we don't have much time, just 15 minutes. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, and actually show you uh, Idraha 2, how to set up a network and um, maybe just give you a brief introduction to get people uh, kind of interested. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about Idraha version 2, uh, the GitHub structure, uh, how to set up your own network, um, how to execute what we call uh, Idraha special instructions, uh, and then like how to use the find CLI uh, to do this. Um, just a very brief introduction. I'm Makoto Takemiya. I'm the CEO of Soromitsu, and Soromitsu is one of the contributors of uh, Hyperledger Idroha, and we use it for many applications, including working with the Central Bank of Cambodia and, uh, and actually many other institutions. We do a lot of really cool work. Um, Idroha version 1 uh, was used in Project Bacom, uh, which is uh, uh, the world's first retail payment system run by a central bank using blockchain, and it's really an exciting app. Um, and we hope in the future to upgrade uh, this system to using Idroha version 2. And, um, uh, but today is not really about Bacong. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, this is just a brief intro. So yeah, so let me get started into Idroha. So the philosophy of Idroha really is about three things. Uh, being simple, uh, focusing on uh, mobile interfaces because that's where people live now, uh, and be blockchain. And what that means is all validators uh, don't trust data, they verify the data. So it's not just a time stamping service, it's actually you know, data validation and uh, distributed consensus. So that's uh, three key principles that we try to keep in mind um, in design. And in Hyperledger Idroha version one, uh, it was written in C++ and in version two, it's written in Rust. Um, and it has many notable exceptions, uh, it, it, I don't know, advantages and differences from Idroha one. So for instance, instead of using a database, all data are kept in memory. Um, but just because you keep it in memory doesn't mean that you lose any data. If there's a power outage, uh, all uh, updates to the block storage are done atomically with the memory and the, uh, and the disk. So you always uh, store, money, uh, store your memory. Uh, well, the, the key part of the data, which is the block storage um, on the disk, uh, but uh, for doing validation and runtime, everything is kept in memory, which makes it really fast. We're also working on Idroha special instructions, which are uh, kind of the basis for a turn complete uh, smart contract uh, capability. Um, and later we plan to incorporate WASM because we think that WASM is, uh, it has lots of advantages. You can, um, you can compile to WASM for many different languages, so it, it makes it potentially easier for um, developers. But this is for the future. Uh, we have a very simple data model. Uh, it's really just a domain, which is like a box. And inside this box, you put asset definitions. Um, and then you have accounts, which have the uh, signatories associated with them. And the accounts also have assets, um, which link to the asset definition. And I'll show you uh, how to set this up and how it works. So it will be more clear in a couple minutes. Um, for GitHub structure, let me show you GitHub. Um, there I've got. GitHub open over here. So if you just go to hyperledger slash Idroha, uh, we have uh, Idroha version one, which is in main branch. But if you want the version two, um, you can go to Idroha two or, or Idroha two dev. Um, Idroha two is uh, not updated as much as Idroha two dev, but dev is, is not as stable as Idroha two. So, you know, if you're just playing around, Idroha two dev might be the best uh, uh, option, because we we make sure that it, it builds and everything. So in the project project structure, we have a uh, Idroha uh, application, Idroha client. There's this command line interface. There's some macros. There's an Idroha network. Um, uh, this is you know the different crates that are being built. Uh, but today I'm going to focus mainly on uh, Idroha, which is the main server. Idroha client CLI, which is the way you execute commands, and Idroha crypto CLI. So um, so let's just get into it because we have six minutes. Uh, how do you set up an Idroha 2 network? It's really simple. Um, you generate your keys using uh, this. Uh, let's see. Oops. Uh, yeah. So, okay, okay. So if I um, show you uh, the build folder here. So we've got a lot of things that are being built, but uh, one of them is, uh, of course, Idroha. And then you've got uh, Idroha uh, 
you don't have crypto um, CLI. Um, so yeah, here it is. You don't have crypto CLI is a tool that you can use to generate keys. So you can go here and be like um, uh, debug uh, you go crypto CLI, and then this will um, use random uh, number generator on your machine uh, in a secure way to generate your private key and public key using uh, by default ED25519, and we use Hyperledger first up for the cryptography. So, so first you generate your keys, and then you set up a, a config.json file for each peer. So the way this looks is like this. Um, I've got four different peers. So Idroha deploy, Idroha 2 deploy, Idroha 3, Idroha 4 deploy. Um, each peer has their own uh, config file where you set the uh, the endpoint uh, ports. So here, for example, port 1337 is used for P2P, uh, and then uh, AD80 is used for um, uh, client queries. And then uh, what you want to do is set, take your key from, from the crypto CLI, put it into the public key and the private key, and then uh, this will um, uh, allow you to, to boot up your node. And uh, if you just have this, uh, you can you can actually run here. Let me um, run it here. You can actually run Idroha, and it will just start up Idroha. It can't do anything yet because there's no clients, uh, other clients on the network, um, and uh, you know they're not really doing anything yet. Uh, but once you read the Genesis file, which is the next, uh, well, I'll I'll talk about that in a second. But once you set up the Genesis file uh, like this, then it'll actually boot up the network for the first time. But before you do Genesis, you have to set up your trusted peers. So you just put the uh, P2P endpoint uh, URL in for each peer, and you put the public key for each peer. And this is important because uh, each peer validates the messages using the assigned messages using the public key, right? Um, and that's pretty simple. You just copy you know these trusted peers files to every um, every peer deployer, and then you um, you need your Genesis file. And this is uh, kind of included by default. If you look in our, um, our Docker distribution, you can kind of see this. Uh, you just need to generate a key for Alice. Uh, Alice is one of the user accounts, and then you can um, uh, easily uh, have the signatory uh, key here for Alice. And then, so you copy this uh, Genesis file to at least one uh, of the peers, and then you hit Genesis, and then you can actually, um, oops, you can actually start up. So, um, yeah, you can see it says uh, committing block with hash there. And then this is new height one, new height one, new height one. So uh, what that means is that, uh, so it, it went kind of fast, uh, but when I started up this peer at the Genesis block, it actually went through uh, the Genesis uh, sections that are in the uh, in this text here, and it committed the blocks. So that's why you, you can see these uh, blocks one in every peer. And then uh, once you have a network, you can execute either how special instructions, which uh, I think a good way to explain this is to show it. So I'm just going to quickly create a new domain called Idroha world. And uh, let me go to my Idroha CLI. So create my Idroha world. Um, so this creates a new transaction, which you, you saw was created and validated on all the peers. So I now have a new domain. Uh, Idroha world, and then I can create a new <clears throat> account, Makoto at Idroha world, using this public key. So let's do that. Oops, I. <laughs> uh, it doesn't like my code because um, Keynote. Uh, I think turned one of my quotes into um, into some special code. Here we go. This is like. There. Okay, so now it executes it, and so I registered this new account, Makoto Idroha World, and then register a new asset called IRH token that has the value type of quantity, and this has the same um, uh, uh, the same problem with uh, this quote, I think, because you know it's not so so friendly. Let me try this. Anyway, there's not too much um, time. I'm probably misspelling something here. Hmm. I will <laughs> look at that in a, in a moment here. Uh, it's, let's go back here. 
to do? I can just uh, go up to my history because I worked fine. There. Okay. So, yeah, I was misspelled. So it uh, creates a new asset called IRH token, and then it has a quantity, and then I can actually mint new instances of this token and give it to Makoto world. So that actually gives me some new token, and then you can actually um, list all the assets in the system using this uh, query command in the CLI, and you can see that I've got Makoto at Idraha world with your 1337 quantity uh, token. So, um, so it's pretty fast. You can see that uh, it's running it in Rust is extremely uh, um, uh, quick and, and it's pretty uh, fast and flexible. So uh, I think that's all the time we have because <laughs> it's uh, only, uh, well, I think, yeah, just maybe uh, four more minutes, I guess, is what we have. So I'll answer some of the questions that are in the chat. So one of the questions is, what's the reason to use Idrahan instead of Fabric? I mean, it, it really depends on what your um, goals are and what your business process um, processes are. So in, in Fabric, uh, it's very different uh, method of consensus and data model and management than in, in uh, Idrahan. And in Idrahan, uh, it's, it's good at some domains. Uh, I would say it's really good for asset creation. So you can see that uh, in this quick demo of just a few minutes, I was able to set up a network and actually mint tokens and um, give them to an account and register an account and, and do these different things. And that's really kind of the, yeah, kind of the, the goal of uh, the project design is to make it uh, really uh, easy to, um, uh, to create different tokens and to do um, uh, kind of asset management in a very quick and, uh, you know, in a way that doesn't have very much uh, overhead. Somebody said, is the mig is migration to Rust done or is it in progress? So uh, there's two separate uh, branches in the uh, GitHub. So let me share my screen again. Um, so there's the, if you go to the Hyperledger GitHub, uh, you'll see, um, here we go. If you go to the Hyperledger you know, GitHub, uh, you'll see a very, uh, various branches here. Um, main is the uh, Idraha version one branch, and then Idraha two uses Idraha two and Idraha two dev. Um, so it's still not a full production release yet. It's still a work in progress, and that's why it's not um, a tagged release at this point, uh, but it will be hopefully soon. So uh, Idraha one is still being maintained. There's a team working on that in C++. And you're welcome to use that in production. It's used by Central Bank even. It's very reliable software. Um, and Idra 2 is really a rebuilt, being a rebuilt from, uh, uh, from, yeah, from zero really um, using Rust. So um, why Rust? Uh, so Rust has, a, you, you know, any language has its pros and cons. Um, I really like Rust because the compiler is extremely strict and uh, this helps you to kind of write um, more kind of like a standardized and um, kind of a, a higher uh, reliability of code. Um, since we have a little bit of time, uh, that's, I, I can, you, you can also execute many other um, commands in, in the list. So like uh, instead of viewing assets, you could view, for example, um, accounts. You can just do account list all, and this will list all the accounts. Um, you have to, yeah, have the query permission to do this, um, but uh, in this default setup, um, all the um, every everything is public, so it's it's fine. So you can see that we have uh, this. When you list the um, the accounts, you actually get not just the accounts, but also the assets the account has. Because if you remember my um, data model uh, figure, uh, the assets uh, every account has assets. And every account also has signatories. You can have multiple signatories. This one just has uh, this public key. Um, not the most friendly uh, user uh, display interface. So in the future, um, so we're currently working on a uh, Android uh, and uh, kind of, I guess, Kotlin uh, library. And then, yeah, so anyway, we're almost done. But uh, so we're working on some user uh, applications to make it a lot easier to integrate this in your apps. Um, so feel free to join in development, head over to Hyperledger Iroha, um, check out Iroha 2 dev branch, just check it out and uh, clone it, hit cargo build, and um, things uh, should, should work. So hopefully uh, that wasn't 
too fast for everyone, but um, hopefully it also shows uh, how easy things are done. Uh, tonight, I'll be speaking about either how to in more depth, so feel free to uh, look at the schedule and come by. So thanks, everyone. Have a, have a lovely day.